Our radiation levels are surpassing our initial models. Thank you everyone for joining this crucial discussion. Our mission faces a significant challenge with radiation, and it's imperative we collaborate on a solution. Let's prioritize this. I'll oversee the refinement of the rare earth elements for the magnetic shielding. The synergy between Hercules' resources and Prometheus' water shield concept could set a new standard for radiation protection on Mars. Agreed. This collaborative effort embodies the spirit of our mission, innovation through unity. Let's move forward with urgency and precision. Dr. Lena, please continue working closely with our engineers and scientists to ensure the seamless integration of these shields. With the war in Ukraine nearing its 24th year and no signs of slowing down. Tonight, we bring you an exclusive report that sheds light on a somber event in our quest to colonize Mars. This image on your screen, obtained exclusively by ENN, shows the tragic impact site on Starship Hera, a reminder of the perils our brave explorers face in the vastness of space. Sadly, this catastrophic event resulted in the loss of all 100 crew members aboard Hera. These individuals, pioneers of humanity's boldest endeavor, paid the ultimate price in pursuit of extending our reach beyond Earth. Each of them left behind families, friends, and a world forever indebted to their courage. The crew of Hera embarked on a mission full of hope and driven by a dream, a dream of a new home among the stars. Today we honor their memory, not just as explorers, but as heroes who helped pave the way for the future, despite the dangers they bravely faced. As we continue to push the boundaries of human exploration, let us remember and honor those who have given their lives in pursuit of expanding our horizons. For ENN, I'm Tom Richards. We will keep you updated on this story as it develops, and we stand with the global community in mourning and solidarity. Good evening, I'm Tom Richards, and this is ENN Global Update. Today we focus on a contentious issue that's captured global attention, the decision to send nuclear reactors to Mars. The decision followed intense debates among world leaders, experts, and the public. Here's a look at what's been said. The idea of launching nuclear materials into space carries unprecedented risks. We must question if the potential benefits truly outweigh these risks. We've reached a critical juncture. Our Martian colonists need reliable power to survive and thrive. This is about human lives and the future of space exploration. Experts weighed in, assuring the public about the safety of transporting and deploying these reactors. Every possible safety protocol has been implemented. These reactors are designed to be fail-safe, secured against any conceivable launch or transit accidents. The decision wasn't made lightly, with public opinion divided. 
Many see this as a bold step forward, while others express fears about potential long-term consequences. Ultimately, the consensus was clear. After the last dust storm on Mars nearly ended in disaster, ensuring a stable power supply became a priority. The reactors were approved and sent, marking a major policy shift in our interplanetary strategy. This story is far from over. We will continue to monitor the situation and bring you all the updates. Here on Mars, the arrival of the nuclear reactors and additional supplies has sparked a new wave of optimism and activity. I'm Diana Wells, and this is what's happening on Mars. A record-breaking fleet of 49 starships arrived safely last month, laden with vital resources that promise to significantly enhance our living conditions and scientific capabilities. However, our joy was tempered by the loss of starship Hera, struck by an asteroid. It was a solemn reminder of the dangers we face in space. Our community mourned, but we remained resilient, committed to our mission here. With the new supplies, projects are underway to expand our habitat modules using advanced 3D printing technologies, enhance our agricultural output, and most critically, integrate the newly arrived nuclear reactors into our power grid. These developments represent a pivotal moment for our colony, the nuclear reactors, in particular, are expected to provide the reliable and robust power needed to weather Martian dust storms and support our growing infrastructure. Joining us now via MarsLink is Dr. Kim, who's been at the forefront of our methane production initiatives. Kim, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Diana. It's great to be here. Kim, could you update our viewers on the progress we've made in methane production and what this means for Mars? Certainly, Diana, we've scaled up our operations to produce methane efficiently from Martian atmospheric CO2 and hydrogen from water ice. This process not only supports our sustainability efforts, but is crucial for fueling rockets. Methane will be key for return missions to Earth and for future explorations, potentially even serving as a stepping stone for missions deeper into the solar system. That's fascinating. There's been a lot of excitement about using Mars as a launch pad for deeper space missions. Can you elaborate on how close we are to seeing this become a reality? We are moving forward with cautious optimism. The infrastructure for methane production is in place, and we are currently in the testing phases. How significant is this for our future on Mars? It's incredibly significant. Producing methane here allows us to be less dependent on us for critical supplies and fuels our ambition to explore further. Thank you, Kim, for those insights. Next on the Martian News Network, we're discussing one of the most critical advancements in our colony's infrastructure, the installation of our first nuclear reactor. Joining us live to talk about this monumental project is the head engineer, Marco, who is overseeing the reactor assembly, and Dr. Lena, our chief safety officer responsible for ensuring all protocols are followed. Welcome to both of you. Marco, let's start with you. Can you give us an overview of the nuclear reactor project and what this means for the Mars colony? Thank you, Diana. The arrival of the nuclear reactor components marks a significant milestone for us. This reactor will not only provide a stable and reliable power supply, but will also support our expansion efforts, enabling more robust research and development activities. The assembly is underway, and we're on track for activation in the coming weeks. Dr. Lena, safety is a major concern when it comes to nuclear technology. Can you tell us about the measures in place to ensure the colony's safety? Absolutely, Diana. Safety is our top priority. We've implemented multiple layers of safeguards, including advanced containment systems and automated safety protocols that are designed to operate even under the most challenging conditions. We also conduct regular drills and training sessions to prepare our team for any scenario. 
As we look towards the future, how do you both see nuclear power shaping the development of the colony? Nuclear power is a game changer. It provides us the capacity to grow and sustain our colony independently of Earth, which is critical for long-term colonization efforts. It will enable us to explore more of Mars, expand our habitats, and perhaps most importantly, ensure our survival and quality of life here. And building on what Dr. Lena said, having a reliable power source also opens up possibilities for further space exploration for Mars. It sets the stage for Mars to become a launch pad for missions to the asteroids and beyond. Thank you both for sharing these insights. It's clear that the nuclear reactor is not just about power, it's about possibilities. For MNN, I'm Diana Wells, thanking our guests today, Engineer Marco and Dr. Lena, for joining us. Stay tuned as we continue to bring you the latest from here on Mars. How are the print layers holding up with the new polymer mix in Sector 5? We need those habitat walls to meet our thermal and structural specs. The latest layers are looking solid, Carter. Adjusting the print speed helped, but we're monitoring the thermal expansion closely, sending over the current data. Good. Keep the adjustments conservative. Let's not rush it. Safety and quality over speed. I'll review the data and get back with any further tweaks. Commander Sophia, this is Carter. I'm pleased to report that the 3D printing of habitat walls in Sector 5 has met all our specifications. We're nearly ready to commence the roofing phase. Your approval to proceed? That's excellent news, Carter. Your team's diligence is making a tangible difference. Before we proceed, are all safety checks in place for this next phase? Yes, Commander. We've conducted thorough inspections and simulations. The new materials integrate well with existing structures, and all safety protocols are greenlit. Good work. Let's ensure we maintain this meticulous attention as we expand. Proceed with the roofing and keep me updated on any adjustments or needs that arise. Will do, Commander. We appreciate your support. Carter out. We've seen big changes at our Mars colony. The arrival of our largest fleet ever, bringing almost 50 starships filled with new supplies and people, combined with starting up our first nuclear reactor, is starting a new chapter for us here. These changes aren't just important milestones. They're steps that will deeply affect how we live, work, and grow on Mars. Facing the challenges of Mars gets a bit easier with each new arrival and every big leap in technology we make. But as we push forward, shadows loom on the horizon. Not all changes bring light. Some may cast long shadows that test our resolve. 